Greetings and welcome to part two of the two-part video series featuring the early 1962 Fender Concert Amp. Um, in this segment we're going to bias the amp and uh, complete it and do some sound checking. So I think you'll enjoy it. Well here's the inside of the chassis and uh, the news is almost all good. Uh, three wire power cable has been installed nicely with shrink wrap. They bypass that hum reduction switch because you don't need it uh, with the three wire uh, input cable. Um, it looks like all of the original capacitors are in place except they've replaced the electrolytics that serve as uh, the cathode bypass capacitors for the 12 AX7s and 7025s. Looks like nice work. Here is that preamp input jack, which I hate, which comes around over here to the volume control uh, of the normal channel. I see no reason for it. Uh, I'm going to remove it and I'm going to put a little metal plug out here to uh, eliminate or cover the hole. Okay, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, somebody modified it for their special purpose and I don't know what that would be. Um, look at those. The pots are nice and clean. The uh, copper strip looks great. Uh, here's the power supply. Okay, here are the diodes that do the rectification for the high voltage. Uh, they replace the electrolytic capacitors here. Now, this is the diode for the bias circuit. And, much to my pleasant surprise, they've inserted a potentiometer here to make the bias adjustable. Uh, and I really salute them. Um, i got to tell you, the more I see of this, the more I really respect the work that went into this amp. Um, a lot of times I look underneath and I'm thinking, it looks like somebody, you know, just did it in the dark with some old coat hanger wire. But in this case, I am, uh, this person, whoever did this work, um, knows their stuff. I, I salute them. Okay, that's the inside of this. Uh, it looks clean. It looks nice. It looks just the way you want it. Um, somebody has gone to a lot of time and effort to bring this up to uh, the best possible operating standards with uh, a new electrolytic capacitors. You know I have mixed feelings about that, but once it's done, uh, it's done. Okay, you live with it and you smile. Okay, uh, the one thing we do need to check though is this, the bias on these tubes. Because we saw from the heat on the output tubes that at some time in the past, uh, these tubes have just been roasted and maybe that's corrected now, maybe not. We need to find out. You just don't want to accept an amp the way it comes in. However, I have to say from the quality of work done on this one, I have a feeling the bias is probably going to be okay now. All right, that's the survey of the inside of the chassis. Uh, I'm going to check the bias and if it's acceptable, put it all together and fire it up and we'll see what a true vibrato sounds like. Okay, I've installed a match set of uh, Fender Groove Tubes. They're the 5881-6L6GB uh, type. And if you notice here, the I'm set up to measure plate current on the right-hand tube. It is now 28 milliamps. And plate current on the left-hand tube is 31 milliamps. So let's go in and calculate real quick what our plate dissipation is. I think it's going to be about perfect. Uh, we also need to know the plate voltage. The left hand tube is 466 and the right hand tube is also 466. This is a really good example of why you need to check your bias settings when you uh, get an amplifier. Here's the old tubes. First of all, there's a mismatch. There's a 5881 and a 6L6. Okay, 5881s are similar to 6L6GBs, but they're considerably less tolerant uh, of plate current and voltage uh, than a 6L6GC. I have a feeling this is a GC. Look at what the plate current was. It was 20 for this one and 12 for the 6L6. Okay, normal is at least 30. Okay, plate voltage 485, 485. It's supposed to be 448. This is high because this is low. As your current goes down, your voltage goes up. Look at this for plate dissipation. We're looking for, say, around 18 or so. Uh, actually, probably 16. 
uh, 9.7 watts on the left, 5.82 on the right. These tubes uh, were so cold uh, you couldn't even hardly tell that the amp was on. Now let's look at the um, biasing results for a brand new set of Fender uh, groove tubes. Uh, they're 5881s or 6L6GBs. So you're looking for around 16 watts of plate dissipation. Uh, plate current 31 on the left, 28 milliamps on the right, which nicely brackets the ideal amount of plate current. Plate voltage 466, 466 down much closer to the 450 that we want. It's still a little high due to the fact that uh, the voltage at the wall now is like 120 instead of 110. So um, it, it's going to make amps run um, a little hotter, uh, a little higher voltage. Plate dissipation 14.4 on the left, 13 on the right, which is almost three times what it was with the old set of tubes. Three times for this one and almost double for this one. So the difference in sound should be huge. Now this is a little under the optimum of 16, but that's fine. I'm going to play the amp, see how it sounds. If it sounds good, we'll, our tubes will last longer, generate less heat. Uh, we'll have a little margin of safety here. Doesn't sound right, then we can goose it up to uh, closer to 16 watts of plate dissipation. And I should also add that this whole biasing procedure took like less than five minutes uh, simply because somebody had the foresight to install this little potentiometer here making this instead of a fixed bias uh, amp into an adjustable bias. If you'd like to see how to do this, I uh, posted a video already uh, addressing this fixed to adjustable bias. So uh, check my previous videos and I'll show you how to do this. Well we're all buttoned up and ready to go. We got a pair of new output tubes that actually match each other. Uh, they're properly biased. We have our new chassis straps installed. We've got that nasty old uh, preamp input jack removed and we're uh, ready to uh, hear some sounds and I'm going to use my uh, speaker uh, that I use here in the shop uh, for testing purposes. It's an old Natco audio visual speaker cabinet with a, a halfway decent uh, 12 inch uh, speaker in there, an Alnico speaker and it's an 8 ohm speaker. Okay now this is going to bring up a really interesting debate and that is what are the consequences of uh, an Im impedance mismatch between speaker and output transformer. In this case, the concert amp output transformer wants to see a 2 ohm speaker load. Instead it's going to see 8. Okay, I don't see that as any problem. If it were the other way around and the output transformer wanted to see 8 ohms and instead saw 2, the speaker impedance was 2 ohms, I think it would be a big problem because this would be pretty close to a short circuit for the output transformer. It would start to flow way too much current, it would run hot, and it would probably burn up. But when the 2 ohm output transformer sees 8 ohms of speaker, actually less current is going to flow, the transformer will run cooler, we might have a little loss of volume, uh, tone is probably going to be just fine, we'll see in just a minute, but uh, as long as you're careful and your impedance mismatch goes to higher speaker uh, impedance rather than lower, I believe you're okay. Well, that little lecture aside, uh, let's go ahead and plug in a guitar and get this thing going and see how it sounds. Okay, we're plugged into the vibrato channel, uh, input number one, which is the high gain input. Uh, the volumes at four, treble, bass, and presence are all neutral, which is straight up, and the vibrato is turned off. Sounds like I'm describing wine now. Um, great bass and mid-range. Uh, it's clear on top. I think it's a great sounding amp. Okay, get ready for a real treat because vibrato is something special. Uh, I don't want to oversell it and have you be disappointed, but here we go. The speed and intensity are straight up uh, like at a, a mid-range setting.
pretty. Okay, check your drama means because we're going to crank up the, the vibrato a little here. We're going to lower the speed and raise the intensity to 8. <laughs> I'll tell you, I am an aficionado of tremolo and vibrato's got it beat. Okay, that's absolutely beautiful. Well, to cover all the bases, here we are plugged into the high gain input of the normal channel. Uh, treble, bass, and presence are all in the straight up neutral position. <laughs> It's a little cleaner than the vibrato channel. Um, beautiful balance of bass, mid-range, and treble. I have to say, uh, this is one of the best sounding amps I've ever heard in my life. I'm really excited about this. Um, I hope you are too. Well, that about does it for today's video featuring the early 1962 Fender Concert Amp. A brown-faced amp in a black uh, head cabinet probably from a basement. Uh, it was never released in this form but I honestly think it should have been. It's very portable, it's powerful, and it is absolutely fantastic tone from this thing. Um, so I kind of think Fender missed the boat by not issuing it in a head form like this. Well uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, I hope you found some things that interested you and I hope that you will join me in the future uh, for more videos. I really appreciate your your time and your interest. Thanks so much for tuning in.